that's it for the races for this penultimate day. But what a day it has been. If you're just joining us, the big storyline, of course, Josh Liendo has won a historic silver medal in the 100-meter butterfly. Uh, great day for Canada. Great day for the Aussies. They have been so dominant here at these World Championships. And it was a great day just for the sport in general with three world records falling uh, lots of checks, $30,000, every uh, every world record just ha handed out. Someone that had a front row ticket to all of this magic, he's on the pool deck. Let's go to Devin Haru right now. Hello, Anastasia. Uh, I was also in the pool earlier today, and I can uh, tell you, at least for me personally, uh, it wasn't a fast pool and there were no world records, uh, but you said it, what a great day. Uh, for the sport, the Australian relay team just passing by here. More gold for them. You said you're going to know the anthem off by heart by the end of it. I already know it. We've heard it so many times here. And of course, Josh Liendo rising to the moment, meeting the moment, uh, and, and rising up to the pressure, right? He didn't start this world championships all that well. But what I love about what we're seeing from these younger Canadians is the pivot, the resilience, their ability to refocus. These are such valuable lessons to go into Paris. Uh, nine world records have now fallen here at the World Aquatics Championships. Six individual, uh, three in the relay. I want to know who's paying for that and where World Aquatics is getting all that money because of course it's 30,000 America for uh, American for every world record. Uh, okay, let's look forward to the final day uh, because I know everybody around here is looking forward to the final day and Summer McIntosh is back in the pool in the event that she holds the world record, the 400 meter IM and she's had two full days of rest. So she will be in the fourth heat at 10.51 a.m. local time. That is 9.51 Eastern on Saturday night back home. And I'm really looking forward to see a fresh summer Macintosh. Uh, and, you know, I think it would feel good for everybody on this team if she were to get a gold medal. Uh, she didn't start it well, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And for the 16-year-old, she has her marquee event, the 400-meter IM, to close it out. Uh, those are all the thoughts I have. Anastasia Britt, Rob Byron, I think you're doing outstanding work. And uh, that's it on a Saturday night in Fukuoka. On a Saturday night in Fukuoka. <laughs> you just got to love it. Sounds a little like Saturday night in Atlanta. I love it, Dev. Um, it was a busy day, so let's just beam in Byron and Rob. Three world records. Uh, where do we even start, Byron? <laughs> Well, I mean, world records are made to be broken, obviously, and, and the athletes are getting ready, and, and you'll see this a little bit more in the pre-Olympic uh, World Championships. The World Championships are historically post-Olympics, pre-Olympics, the first and third year of a quadrennial, and the first one of the quadrennial, usually uh, people are getting back into it slowly and you don't see a lot of fast times, but this one, you gotta start stepping up, because if you're gonna make your move and you're gonna be a player in Paris, you better do something a year out because you can't make huge strides in just 12 months. You need 24 months if you're going to make a big move. So, so I, I was I wasn't surprised that we saw a lot of the world records, especially the relay records. I thought they'd go for sure, but I was pleased to see it anyway because it brings attention to our sport, to my sport anyway, um, and and uh, Brittany's sport, and and it's uh, something that uh, don't get in the headlines all the time. So I liked it. It was great. Anastasia and I are, are guests. We you love your sport <laughs> okay. a lot. We really do. All right, let's talk about one of the world records, Ruta Milia Tite in the breaststroke, the 50 meter event. This was a semi-final and she absolutely, out of lane two, so that means she kind of, you know, what didn't go full out in the uh, the first race, but she certainly went out all out in the semi-final. Well, and I've seen this happen several times where the athletes let it all go in the semi-final because again, the prelims are in the morning, the semi-finals are in the evening, then they do get a rest for the next night for the finals. But, but I've seen this happen where there's really no pressure, but they still want to really do a good job. And so what ends up happening is I've seen it three, four times where they've broken a world record in the semi-final and then Three, three of those four times, they lost the final. They right. didn't even win the gold medal the next day. So, so anyway, there was a lot of less pressure. You get up there, you just do it, and everything clicks, and that's when you can get your world record. So I don't know if we'll see another world record by those athletes tomorrow, but at the same time, it was an amazing performance. And Melia Titi from Lithuania, I mean, her story just, it, it just resonates with me, and, and I think with, with the entire populace. Is it just, you know, she was really in a bad place after 2018, mm. and to be able to come back and do this and, and basically reestablish herself, it's incredible.
An athlete who has, uh, well, let's take a look at this final. Amelia Tite up there in lane number two. And she's just such a naturally beautiful swimmer in the, the breaststroke. The only thing is, she keeps tying this record. It's three people. Well, she holds, she holds just two portions of it. And Pilato has the other. So three people tied for that world record. All right, let's talk about the uh, the Swedish superstar, Sjöström. She was in two big races, wins the gold in one, and then a few minutes later, crushes the wor her own world record in the other one. Well, and Anastasia was asking me, you know, how, what do they do? How do they prepare? You know, you only got 14 minutes. Turned out to be, I think, be 12 and a half minutes when they actually got around to the block. And 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 the point is, because it's not a four-minute race, it's not necessarily going to deplete your energy that much. It's just basically a sprint. It's almost like, you know, doing a power lift with a, in a bench press or something. So you can basically get up and go the freestyle right off a 50 butterfly and your muscles are still pretty fresh and hers were if anything primed because she was really in there powerful and just pulls away from the rest of the field wasn't that big of a lead but now it's just and notice her turnover is faster than the others she's really grabbing water surging forward with each stroke that she takes and then boom right to the wall the interesting part is during the year, she has posted so many times that we're within a couple of tenths of a world record, which means she's never really getting herself so tired. Her muscles are never to the point where they get unsharp. She's always firing at a very high level, which is a, a little bit of a different philo philosophical approach than a lot of coaches take. They say, well, we're going to beat you down, and then we'll rest you, and you'll be amazing. But her philosophy, her coach's philosophy is, no, we're just going to go fast all year. We're just going to be really fast, and then at the very end, we'll tack on a little bit more rest, and you'll go even faster. Her, but she's just unstoppable during the season as well as here. I, I, that seems like a good psychological approach uh, to me, to the layman anyway. All right, we got to talk about the Australians. They just keep winning golds. They keep setting world records. And tonight, I think, was an exercise in their depth. Emma McKeon, the Olympic gold medalist in the 100 meters, is having a eh, so-so meet. So they put in Shayna Jack, and they blitz another world record. Well, and, and you know, success begets success. And, and what's happening now is you're going to have momentum going forward. The question is, did they peak too soon? I mean, that's, you know, we talked about that briefly. Right? Are, are they so good now that they can do nothing but worse next year at the Olympic Games, which is where obviously the big thing is. Up at the top, you'll see Canada finishing the fourth in that relay. Nice job. But so the Australians know what they're doing now. But the key going forward for the Australians are the coaches. The coaches have to keep their eye on the prize. They can't sort of relax and think that, oh, we've accomplished everything we have to accomplish. They need to be pushing the envelope and keep pushing these athletes to get them ready for the Olympic Games. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what everybody talks about. The worlds are important as hell to set you up for success, but the big success is the Olympics, and it's all on the coaches. It's not on the administrators. It's on the athletes, but the coaches have got to direct what's going to happen. So King Kyle and his crew from Down Under, gold medalists again. Let's send it back to Anastasia and Brittany. Okay, you guys get a glass of water because we've made you speak all day, every day for the last uh, billion days. But hey, last thoughts. I know you have a few storylines you want to touch upon. Uh, Josh Leando, though, is of course the biggest Canadian storyline, historic silver medal in the 100 fly. Yeah, I, the thing that I took away from his post-race interview was maturity, mature perspective. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was someone to be able to stand there and say, I'm so proud of that performance. Like, you should be. Good for you. That was exceptional swimming. To go faster in the prelim, the semi, the final, that's what you want to see. He's going to work with his coaches on what to fine-tune, but the, the system is working, right? The build the, the build that you're, you're filing is working. So keep up what you're doing, Josh. It's incredible to watch you. We're such big fans. I love how he rides the water. I love how he swims his race. And, and most importantly, I love the composure that he brings. Yeah, as I said, one bronze, last world, silver here. Who knows? Paris is going to be fun. Uh, Cam McAvoy won the 50 free by essentially five tenths. Yeah. Like, that is unheard of. Yeah. No, honestly, you don't ever see that in a men's 50 free. The splash and dash is always within hundreds. If anything, it's within tenths. But yeah. five tenths, that's a full half a second in a race that only takes over 20 seconds. So, McAvoy, this is a really cool story. And, and our men in the booth have mentioned it a lot. But I remember swimming as a junior swimmer. My first ever competition was actually in Australia when I got to represent Team Canada. And I was a, a 14 or 15 year old. And he was the star at the time, also about 14 or 15. You watch me sitting on this side of the desk now, and he's still out here breaking records. Only 0.15 from that world record. So we were close to even seeing a fourth world record fall today.
to be that dominant in that race, he's definitely changed his kind of routine. He was all, more known for the 100 and the 200. Mm -hmm. And now he's taken this 50 and decided, I'm going to own the 50. And it's obviously working. Not even on the Australian Relays. This is like his bread and butter. He's focusing on this race and this race only. So arrested Kim McAvoy shows up and shows out tonight in that 50 freestyle. Well, what's funny is when you're racing, like even if you beat someone by 1 100th, you're like, oh, I... I killed it. You know, I beat them five tenths. Like, yeah. that is unheard oh, yeah. of. I mean, that is, I mean, we're talking 50 free. So we're not talking Katie Ledecky, but that's how Katie, Katie Ledecky made the 800 meter look. It's just so easy. Right. And similar equivalents, honestly, that like five <laughs> seconds in yeah. an 800, the, the half a second in the 50. I think if someone's going to do our math, it's not quite the same, but it's close. So the fact that, you know, we see Ledecky over and over again, the top. 30 times in this race. And most people, Anastasia, will swim a whole career in the pool and never even do 3,800 freestylers, the freestyle races, excuse me, but she is now the fastest 30 of them, which is ridiculous. She is the, she is what we all achieve for. She is the rising star, or sorry, shining star. She's already risen. She is here. She is the shining star of women's swimming and women's distance specifically. I love how she went out for it in that race, as you can see. She was under the world record mark and then faded a little bit coming home, but another time under 810, the only swimmer to ever get under that 810 barrier, and she does it in 808.87. Lee Benji and Arian Titmus both setting best times in that race. So when you look across the board, you got a world-class leader, and then you got two PVs to get on the podium. That's a pretty good field. It's a pretty good field. It's a pretty good day, and uh, tomorrow is our last day. It is going to be epic, that 400 IM. Watch out for Summer Macintosh. We're having a ton of fun. We hope that you did, too. Let us know what you're enjoying. There will be more checks, I think, handed out tomorrow. <laughs>